All right, third graders, for today, we are going to be reading a book called The Juice Box Bully. But I want you to take a little bit of time and look through this list of character traits. And I know that you've seen many lists of character traits before, and we've been going over them quite a bit this week. But just briefly scan through this list of character traits. Okay, I want you to have some of these in your mind, and I want you to be thinking about them as we read through this book today. The Juice Box Bully is empowering kids to stand up for others. I have to move my picture. Unfortunately, it's in my way. All right, here we go. As Pete stood in front of his new class, Mr. Peltzer announced, let's welcome Pete to our team. Pete, you will be sitting behind Ralph. So look at the illustration. You can see Pete standing there. You can clearly see where Ralph is sitting. So you kind of can visualize where he'll have to go. Settling into his seat, Pete pulled his hat down over his head so that only his eyes could be seen. Turning around, Ralph warned him, They don't allow hats in class here. You're not my mother, snarled Pete. All right, so, so far we are not really off to a good start. Why do you think he, first of all, has a hat on, and why do you think he's pulling it down over his head so only his eyes can be seen? How do you think he's feeling right now? And then think about Ralph, who's clearly sitting in front of him. Why did he turn around and even say that? Why didn't he just leave it up to the teacher and let the teacher decide what to do? Hmm. Be thinking about character traits for both of these characters. After giving an assignment, Mr. Peltzer walked around the class and quietly asked Pete to remove his hat. Once he walked away, Pete poked Ralph. Thanks a lot, he growled. So, of course, now Pete thinks that the only reason why the teacher said something is because Ralph brought it up, when really the teacher was going to say something already anyway. <clears throat> Later that day at recess, Pete didn't ask to join the soccer game. Instead, he watched. Hmm. It's giving us a little bit more information based on his character. Think about how he's feeling. Think about his actions. Think about the things that he has said. So his dialogue. Basically, we're thinking right now of F-A-S-T, if you remember that chart that we would make on the, um, on the board. Hi, Pete, Ralph said. Do you want to get into the game? Not with those nerds, Pete replied. I don't like those kids. What do you want to do? asked Ralph. I thought at the beginning of the book that he had just joined the school, so how could he know who he likes and who he doesn't like? Pete smiled spitefully. Let's steal the ball. We're bigger than them. We can have our own game. I don't think so, answered Ralph. That's not how we do things around here. Then I'll do it myself, taunted Pete, if you're so afraid. Wow, he's definitely becoming a different person than what I would have thought. So how is he acting? How is he definitely going to be treating others? Do you think something else is going on outside of school that is making him act this way? Pete ran over to the field and yelled, pass it to me. When David passed the soccer ball, Pete grabbed it and ran off the field. What's going on? shouted David. Because, of course, think about it. If someone were to come over and take the ball and just run away with it, you would probably be like, what's happening? Same type of thing is happening. David has no idea what's going on. Pete didn't answer. He ran faster and faster, then turned and waved the ball in the air. At first, the kids just stood there. Then they huddled together before walking over to Pete. 
Ruby and Lucy led the way. I wonder what the girls are going to do. Let's make a prediction. I know you're new around here, but what are you doing? Asked Ruby. I'm playing with the soccer ball, Pete snapped. Think you're going to take it away from me? Wow. Ruby didn't argue, nor did she threaten Pete. Instead, she softly but firmly explained. It's your first day here, so there is no way you could know this. In, mis in Mr. Pelster's class, we made a promise. We promise to take care of ourselves, each other, and our classroom, and to solve problems peacefully. We promise that in this class, no one would stand by and accept bad behavior. When someone acts hurtfully, we all speak up. We want you to be a member of the class and to make the same promise. That, to me, sounds like a pretty good thing. Dumb rules. Dumb promises. Throwing the ball to the ground, Pete walked away. He's just not making good choices. The next day, Pete ate alone. When he finished lunch, the kids raced out of the lunchroom while Pete trailed behind. Ruby ran up to Pete and asked, do you want to play soccer today? I don't play with nerds. Okie dokie, Ruby replied. Hmm. She was being nice. And even though the day before, um, he wasn't being that great of a human being, but I'm glad that she was giving him a second chance. But unfortunately, it sounds like he's still going to be making the same mistakes. Hey, Ruby, Pete called after her. Ruby stopped and turned. Nice shirt, Pete complimented. Then he squirted her, his juice box right at her. Oh, I really thought that he was going to start being nice again. Nope. You are so mean, she shrieked at him. I'll tell everyone how mean you are. You won't have any friends here. Well, that's not necessarily the right thing to do either, is it? By now, Ralph, David, and some others had come up to them. Ruby, I won't let you do that, Ralph said clearly. Remember our promise. I don't want to remember the promise. Look what he did. We'll ignore him forever until he leaves the school and goes back to his old school, Ruby demanded. Now, we know that Ruby is upset, but just because something happens doesn't mean that you can be very, very mean to that person. Ralph walked between Ruby and Pete. We're not going to do this, Ruby. I know you're angry. You can tell Mr. Peltzer if you want, but we're not going to let you treat Pete like this, and we won't put up with his bad behavior either. Ruby stomped away, leaving Pete and Ralph behind. No one's ever done that before, Pete said. Why did you stand up for me? I've been in your shoes, and I learned being a bully doesn't work. And I'm not a bystander, Ralph said. I don't stand by and let mean things happen. Besides, Ruby is my friend, and you shouldn't have ruined her shirt. Won't the other kids be mad at you for sticking up for me, Pete asked. No way. They all made the same promise. We talked about it for a long time, and Mr. Pelter and every kid here tries to keep that promise. At my old school, I got picked on all the time, Pete said. Everybody just let it happen, so I started to tease kids before they could be mean to me. Oh, okay, that does make sense now why he acts the way that he does. He's trying to keep like a barrier up, or he's trying to keep a wall up, so what happened at his old school doesn't happen now at his new school. Ralph replied, we decided that when somebody tries to be a bully, no one will stand by and let it happen. We speak up or we ask for help from an adult, but we won't be bystanders to, good, or to bad behavior. The bell rang and it was time to go back to class. They hate me. They'll never let me play with them, Pete said. Before Ralph could answer, David, Lucy, and Ruby came toward them. I'm sorry about what I said. Ruby apologized. I can't believe I forgot the reason why we made the promise. If we can remember to stand up for each other, school is a lot more fun. Which is true. Wow, the kids here are way different than at my other school, Pete said. Maybe I'll give this promise thing a try. Great, let's go talk to Mr. Peltzer, said Ruby. Hey, Ruby. Sorry about your shirt, Pete added. Ruby smiled. No worries. I kind of like the new look. 
Everyone laughed as Pete and Ruby led the way into class. So think about his actions throughout the book and what made it turn around. So the climax, if you think about the climax of the story, was right when Ralph stood up for him. He's never had that happen to him. It made him realize that even though people don't make the greatest choices, there's always people out there that are going to help you and assist you and stand up for you and be on your side. Now, we don't want to um, support bad behavior, but sometimes those people that are choosing bad behavior, they need to see that there are good things in the world. There are good people. All right, that is the end of the book.